You're watching Community Conversations, a Concord TV production. Hello, this is Community Conversations. I'm Doris Ballard, your host. This program is a production of Concord Community TV, or Concord TV as we are called. And uh, it is also a podcast, and you can watch this on demand. So if you don't have our channel, if you know people who don't have our channels and you're watching it on our channel now, on channel 22, then let them know they can watch it on yourconcordtv.org. Someone I'm very excited to talk to is my guest today. Uh, he is Michael Horn. He's the director of the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, which is in Bosquin, New Hampshire. If you've never been there, uh, I invite you to go taking a walk and showing some respect to all the veterans that have been buried this beautiful, peaceful location. And with that, I'm going to welcome Michael Horn. Well, thank you, Doris. Welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, I'm thrilled. You spoke before Rotary, and yes. uh, I was so impressed with what you're doing there that I said, I've got to have you on Community Conversations, and here you are. Good, because right. I love to get the word out about, uh, again, the, the people of New Hampshire. It's their veteran cemetery. That's great. All right, so uh, as I always do, I okay. ask my guests to tell us a little bit about themselves and what led you to being the director of New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. So what's your background, and how did you get into this position? How did I get? Okay, well, I went off and joined the, the military. I uh, went to Norwich University, Vermont, and that got me wanting to fly. And uh, so I was going to be a pilot in 75, but the Air Force didn't need pilots because Vietnam went away. Mm -hmm. So I went off and did four years in, in the Air Force as an engineer, came back, found the New Hampshire Air National Guard over at Pease, and I worked uh, for the Air National Guard for 28 years. And uh, people may not know, but the cemetery is under the Adjutant General's Department. So as the cemetery was being established and as it, initial years, um, I kind of interacted with uh, you know, people at the cemetery, came up to services, ceremonies, and then when I needed to retire um, back in 2008, I needed a you know, look at another follow-on job. And I was very fortunate that my background as an engineer and uh, understanding veteran services and such uh, opted me to get selected by the Adjutant General to be the director. That's uh, always interesting to me how people b become involved with an organization or be <coughs> are employed as a result of what's happened to them in the past life and it was meant to be. I, so just yeah. by hearing what you're saying, it almost seems like it was meant for I, you to yeah, be. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. That's great. Uh, anyway, uh, so now we know, well, first of all, thank you for your service. Well, it's a wonderful. That's a long time. And um, so you mentioned that you have an engineer's degree. What part of that is helping you as, as the director of the Veterans Cemetery? Well, the engineering background probably helps me with the uh, development of the cemetery, mm -hmm. a little bit of the operation because I do understand facilities. And, uh, and the, the cemetery is kind of like its own little campus. If I, you know, we've, we've got utilities that come in. We've got to run a computer system. Um, we've got to plow the roads, we've got to, you know, irrigation, mow the grounds. Um, so we've got a staff that does that and we need to plan for it, budget for it, and also look at expansion. Uh, to, the cemetery's only got 15 of the over 60 acres that can be graves. And so, you know, a lot of that played into my background of understanding, you know, how to, how to plan and how to uh, execute. That sounds like a perfect match. Yeah. So, and you've been there since uh, when? October 2008. 2008 yeah. and um, so just over nine years now so. <laughs> what's a typical day for the, uh, the director of oh. New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery usually it's uh, I, I arrive before I have to but uh, many days I'll I'll come down the main entrance the avenue of flags and try to see okay what are the visitors seeing uh, I drive my staff nuts because I'm looking to see what's not perfect um, my feeling is you know we aim aim for perfection knowing we can't be there but you know, is there any paper blowing around? Is there a flag that's gotten loose? Is there, you know, some gardens that need some attention or, or things such, you know, so I look at it from that. And then it's a matter of, uh, you know, working with my, my crew as they come in. And uh, it got a great crew, uh, you know, dedicated individuals, some who are veterans, uh, some who aren't veterans, but in their families they were veterans. So, you know, they've all told me that, uh, you know, they initially started as a job, but then it became kind of a, a, a passion. Uh, we're, we're honored to work there and to, you know, do the best, uh, the best that we can to keep it perfect. 
Um, now, having served for so many years in the military, I know that we talked about your being an engineer and how that helped, but mm -hmm. what, how does that help you as a veteran yourself in helping well, it, with others? I, it helps me. I, I'm not a wartime veteran. I never, never deployed like you know nowadays where people are going for one year or back in World War II where it was shorter time perhaps, but I didn't do that. Um, I didn't move around a lot. I had four years out in Denver and then I came back and the National Guard allowed me to be in New Hampshire, but um, you know, I put the uniform on. I trained to be ready. Um, I you know, kind of had two lives, a military piece as well as a civilian piece. And, and also, I've got a family who missed me um, when I was off at training, missed me uh, you know, when I was uh, deployed because there were training deployments. And also understand that uh, what they went through wondering if the check that I wrote was ever going to get uh, called in mm -hmm. and, and, and activated and deployed. So uh, there's a little piece of, you know, not, I don't have that wartime experience, but I've got the camaraderie of veterans and understand that, you know, we're always, uh, you know, we want to be there for each other. Right. And uh, we're kind of a, kind of a special, a special breed. Sure. Um, now, we've talked about you a lot, and uh, just for those who are tuning in, this is Community Conversations, a production of Concord Community TV, and my guest is Michael Horn. He's the director of New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, and I'm going to give the website now. I'm going to okay. repeat it yeah. often. So it's uh, nhsvc.com, which is New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. Uh, all the information you want on that website is there. I went and checked it out. And we're going to be covering a lot of what you can find there. So if you don't remember what we've just talked about or you want to know more, go to that, nhsvc.com. All right, now we've talked about you, and let's now talk about the cemetery. Um, you mentioned 15 acres of 60. Of that, are, are, six of, of 60. The property right. is 104 acres, wow. of which about 60 can be graves, mm -hmm. actually gravesite locations, some of its hillsides and streams and such. Um, and I did a little projections back a few years ago um, that based on the, the burial type, cremation versus casket burials, uh, and above ground with the columbariums or the walls, mm -hmm. as, as some people say, um, close to 80% of the people are choosing you know, to be cremated, and, and so it's a lot less space. You know, the mm -hmm. in-ground graves are four foot by four foot with an up -ground, up, above ground headstone. So I envision, you know, with the, if things go as planned, it could take the best part of this century before the cemetery is built. Wow. Uh, some people, the, the rumors out there that mm -hmm. we're filled and there's no more room, but I got to tell you, there's, you know, it's, it's a, only 20 years old uh, as of last month. Um, a little over 10,000 people um, are interred wow. there, veterans or their dependents, typically their mm -hmm. spouses. Okay. Um, so it's not just veterans that can be... Um, Interred, in the, there. interred there, yeah. but uh, dependents. The dependents, right. uh, it, more primarily the spouse. Mm -hmm. um, and the big thing is kind of a foot stomper. New Hampshire is not a common law state, so there are some couples that are together, but they don't get married. And oh. it breaks my heart when they've been oh. together, but under the National Cemetery right. criteria, they have to be married to be buried together. Um, one plus thing is you don't have to be a resident of New Hampshire. So those, those uh, perhaps the adults that have come mm -hmm. to New Hampshire because their children are here, their grandchildren are oh, here. That's that a good they, point. Yeah, right. that they can be buried close to where people would be apt to visit. They can go visit, yeah. right. Oh, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so how did they um, choose the land where the cemetery is? And, and how, I mean, they had to buy the land, the state, well, right? The, they it own was, the land? It was, they owned it. It was mm -hmm. a state forest. But back I in the see. early, probably 90. 293, there were you know, a few legislators and veterans that decided in looking around that uh, some states were establishing their own state cemetery, a partnership between the National Cemetery Administration and the state. And they got looking. And fortunately, uh, I believe it was a selectman at that time in Bosquin kind of said, hey, we got a state forest here in Bosquin. Why don't you come check it out? Because they had looked around. Uh, we're not geographically the center of New Hampshire, but I think perhaps population-wise. Um, if you go all the way to the, the coast, Atkinson over to Portsmouth right. or something, or over to Keene, the criteria the National Cemeteries use is 75 miles yeah. for a veteran or families to get to a cemetery. And uh, so short of, you know, above the notch, 
that covers New Hampshire pretty well, um, keeping it within the cemetery criteria. It's in Boskwin, uh, 110 Daniel Webster Highway. Yeah. And it, I find it pretty easy to get there from you yeah, know, it's, anywhere. It, it's really, the as we tell people, exit 17 off Route 93, and we're five miles um, north as you head up towards Franklin. How, um, what are the hours of uh, being open? The office is open uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, uh, except for state holidays. The grounds are open daylight hours, seven days a week. And uh, we have the outer vestibule of the administration buildings on a timer. So daylight hours uh, during the week or all, all daylight hours on the weekend, you can get in and get to the grave locator. It's an automated computer touchscreen grave locator. It's easy, too. Right, right. And there's information uh, for our other veteran services, too, that we keep in the lobby. So the main, uh, the main area is open. Uh, it's weekends open. Yep. and you can go on and you can the you can get inside and also the outer mm -hmm. bathrooms even mm -hmm. are on timers that's so if you're there you can you know you can use the restrooms that's um, that's yeah. a big help well, right? it, it you're driving yeah. for them a long way yeah. right well, there's some people that wrote, that know it's it's right. a well-kept area and very thoughtful yeah. right all right now uh describe for us uh, what people can expect when they go in uh, to the cemetery you brought a few um, well, I brought, photos for I guess us. one, I brought it up, and I'll, I'll just kind of mm -hmm. hold it. So, oops, okay. I've got two okay. things. Okay, you have two. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll put that behind. But so, I, I mean, I'll just uh, yeah, say, if you're ahead. just tuning in, this is Michael Horn, Director of New Hampshire State Veterans uh, Cemetery. And now, okay, so here's, so I'll this, help you out here. So this is the, the map of uh, the cemetery. It's 2004 master plan, mm -hmm. but the light green is what... Uh, is currently developed. So if you come in, that's what you see where we're mowing the grass yeah. or there's graves or headstones. It might be a glare, I'm not sure, oh. but we'll, I'm yeah. sure they'll see some of it. Right? Yeah, and, um, and the, the darker area is what is currently still wooded mm -hmm. trees. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a, right now, um, an expansion grant. Uh, all, the, all the development of future areas is a partnership between us and the federal government. So I put together a grant request of estimated what it'll cost and so we're looking I've got a two two million dollar grant mm -hmm. that's a pre-approved we just started the design but it'll be clearing this area here to include crossing a stream putting in a small bridge to get us over to this area but that'll be the next expansion that okay, hopefully beautiful. hopefully next summer probably in the fall a year from now uh, that'll be under construction and doing mm -hmm. the clearing Exciting. just to stay ahead try to get 10 mm -hmm. years worth of burial space wow. so there's always so we're not going to run out you know, before uh, pe people have the need. So there's a historical walkway I see there, and uh, yeah, there's there's two military mm -hmm. history. When uh, oh. the cemetery got created, uh, it was there was a cemetery, and then in 2000, um, the, there was a group of veterans that stood up a nonprofit, the uh, Veterans, um, the New Hampshire Veterans Cemetery Association, mm -hmm. which is a 501c3 charitable. Yeah. Well, the first project they did was to raise funds, and they put 20 points of military history up around the, the main flags, which are storyboards on the backside of granite mm -hmm. slabs. And starts in the 1600s. Uh, they updated the boards um, a year ago, so now it includes Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And so it wow. goes all the way up to current history. Uh, in fact, this morning we had a, a school group in from Franklin that uh, came to visit uh, some of the children went out on the walkway, which are, mm -hmm. have monuments from uh, all sorts of veterans group, one for each of the branches of the military, um, plus the merchant marines. And so, you know, some of the children went there, some went to visit the chapel, mm -hmm. uh, went inside to see the chapel, which is really a shelter designed for the committal service. Right. Um, but we were lucky that we got a full chapel and not a, just a, um, a, a covered area to have I've it. been to a service in the chapel. It's yeah. Very lovely. I mean, oh, peaceful, neat. lovely, lovely. And the mural place, that yeah. was 2008, there was a New Hampshire artist that the mm -hmm. auxiliary from the VFW um, approached, and he did the, the two paintings in the, in the chapel, too. Exactly. So very spectacular. Beautiful. So why don't we put that away okay. for now? Yeah. And um, so the, and you, you do have another one there, and we'll talk about this one a bit in a bit. Yeah. Okay, well, this one's really, it, it's kind of, it's but just, we talked about New Hampshire history, and it's much right. like that. So okay, why don't, well, why don't we talk about this okay. plan here? Well, uh, a couple of years ago, the, uh, the nonprofit, the Veterans Heritage, mm -hmm. uh, the Veterans uh, Association, decided that we needed to take uh, military history a little further. We still have the cemetery, but as people came, 
Um, the points of history was good, but this gives the ability to put in more um, information and to help um, complement what's out there in the walkway and the points of history. So this is an addition on, on the end of the administration building that people will come in from an entrance to it, come around kiosks, and it'll flow just like the points of history do from the 1600s all the way up to the current day. Uh, up here it's envisioned that they'll be able to see who's, who's deployed now from New Hampshire oh. um, and you know look at things. This area, those are foot lockers that are designed to be the seats for people to look at this large TV screen mm -hmm. um, or have a presenter come right. that we could have reenactors or things like that. But inside um, is the plan to have uh, equipment, you know, whether it's helmets or, mm -hmm. or load-bearing equipment. Uh, you know, the children this morning said, and guns. And I said, well, there, there may be some right. inert, some that are mm -hmm. safe, but so they can envision, you know, what did the military... Right use for the various uh, conflicts right. over the over I'd the be centuries. more interested in what they wore. Yeah, the uniforms, <laughs> right. sure. Yeah. And how they could even survive in those uniforms in some right. of the, the oh, heat of Afghanistan. Well, or, or, the, or the hot right. cotton right. cotton that they wore winter and summer pretty much, and yeah. uh, that was it. And when right. it rained, right, right. So we're also, you can just lean that there if yeah. you want. Yeah, okay. Go. Uh, all right, so um, I want to talk about some of the events that you have at okay. the cemetery and I didn't realize that you had tours there so if anybody wants a tour they can contact well, you yeah they can give us a call uh, if it's you a mean group. like a group tour if it's a group we do it with retirement homes mm -hmm. uh, schools mm -hmm. uh, we love to and we've got uh, a syllabus that a teacher who teaches in Chichester Ruth Bidwell um, put together a multi-page um, syllabus middle school oriented mm -hmm. but so She's got the answer sheet as well as a blank one that the children can break into groups of two and three and go out and get the answers off the points of history of the walkway or look up a grave, find somebody, and, uh, and connect, mm -hmm. you know, just to see the story. So schools, we invite schools to come. Give us a holler. We give you an intro and then, in most cases, you know, turn you loose and ask you to just be respectful. Um, or, um, or come on up on uh, nights and weekends and, mm -hmm. and self-guided tour, you know. See what's there. It's more than just coming to visit a grave. All right. Well, my guest is Michael Horn. You're watching Community Conversations. It is, we are a podcast as well. It's a production of Concord TV. And Michael is the director of the New Hampshire State Vet Veterans Cemetery, which is in Bosco, in New Hampshire. And go to the website, and you can find everything about it on nhsvc.com or New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. That's what that stands for. Um, now, all right, you had a beautiful Veterans Day ceremony. That's mm -hmm. one that I have attended that I know. Well, we've got the big, mm -hmm. uh, like Veterans Day, mm -hmm. Memorial Day, Memorial which Day. we do on a traditional May 30th. Um, uh, and yeah, they're well attended. Oh, they well, are. Right? They, they, you know, especially in the warmer weather. Veterans mm -hmm. Day, people get pulled at the same day, the same time, so that the numbers are down there, as it should mm -hmm. be. But yeah, Memorial Day, we could have five to 600 people there, uh, multi-generational from grandparents to great-grandchildren, which is kind of exciting. Um, but it's the only limiting factor is where can we park the cars? Right. Uh, we've got a, there's a piece of property across from the entrance that uh, the association purchased and donated to the state, so we've got some extra parking outside of the cemetery. But So Memorial Day, uh, twice a year, there's a POW MIA Remembrance Day because there are a number of New Hampshire veterans who were POWs in the Pacific Theater in Germany who got freed, came home, and went on with their lives. But uh, two days that honor those folks. Um, How do you get the word out so that the public may... Well, the one way the is you, you plugged our, our uh, <laughs> website, but mm -hmm. on our website you can sign up right. for emails. and right. uh, Or you can just randomly look at our calendar. Mm -hmm. Up at the top there's a menu that says calendar. Not only do you see the interments that are coming up, but you can see the events, like uh, a week from Saturday on December 16th, 10.30 mm -hmm. that Saturday, uh, we'll be putting um, 1,800 wreaths out on graves. We, wow. we won't do the whole cemetery. The cost to do the whole cemetery would probably be over $40,000 really? worth of wreaths. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, How but long have you, have you been doing that at the since, cemetery? Since 2007. Uh, and you have volunteers that help to well put we, the wreaths it, up? It's led by the, the Blue Star Mothers of oh, New Hampshire that okay. lead it. Um, they're the ones that do the fundraising. They're the ones that uh, ask me what sections and how many wreaths, and they order the wreaths. Um, we pretty much come in, open the facility up, and, uh, and help support them. The volunteers, um, 
we just have to slow, in some cases, slow them down because we get so many people. We, we don't start till 1030 because there's people that come from an hour away and some people are there at an hour ahead of time and they want to get started. But it's, it's more about the journey and not the, it's not about yeah. getting a Reese out, it's a process of doing that. Right. Uh, must be beautiful. It, it is, yeah. especially if you get just a little bit of snow. Not mm -hmm. an, last year it was in the middle of a snowstorm and we figured it was not going to happen. Right. We had as many people really? coming up through the snowstorm as we typically do on a yeah. non-weather day. It means a lot to people to it support does. their uh, veterans who have and the, served. And, and the other thing is putting the flags out, in, out on the graves and bringing them in. We do that twice a year, Veterans Day and Memorial mm -hmm. Day. And we're always looking for volunteers to help us do that. Um, so you know, check our website out. Sign up for the news. We, we do send out emails periodically. Or when in doubt, give us a phone call. And, and that uh, is uh, seven nine six two zero two six. Yeah, and if it's after hours, leave a message, and we'll get right back to you. Yeah. You work a lot of hours, do you? I mean, no. I do. Uh, well, again, uh, yeah. I, the job. I think it's a good fit. I like to help people, mm -hmm. um, and so after hours, if people have have, um, you know, someone dies and they don't know what to do next, or they're they're just wondering, you know, they've contacted the funeral mm -hmm. home, but they want to be sure, you know, is my paperwork mm -hmm. good? Um, and that's the other thing. I ask people, you know, put in your application and get pre-qualified if you can. So it's easy. It's a phone call. You answered one of the questions I had. So if you want to have someone that you love that has passed, that's been in the military, yeah. uh, they need to contact Contact us. Office. The funeral homes yeah. know how to, how to do it. I was going to say, you, might, yeah. you probably have a collaboration with we funeral do. homes as well. We do. We well. do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you talked about columbarians. So there's... Um, they're very interesting. They're like they're, blocks of... Uh, the, yeah, it, they're, it, they're made of concrete right. covered with granite facing, and they're mm -hmm. uh, a, pretty much a 12, 12 right. inches by 12 inches by 18 inches deep, enough right. room for two, two urns. And you have a, a map that yeah. people can go find. To find the sections, yeah. Someone, yeah. Right. It, a touchscreen computer, or you can use your phone. Go out to the National Cemetery Grave, National Grave Locator, and if you put in the name, uh, some cases you can go and select mm -hmm. our cemetery, but if you put in the name and the year of death, it'll pretty much bring it up. And you anywhere? Can actually, anywhere. Anywhere yeah. in, in, in the, the country. And with a smartphone, with a smartphone, people you know, don't even have yeah. to come in the lobby to look That's it up. That's fantastic. All right. How are you funded? We're a state organization under the Adjutant General's Department. Myself and all my employees are state employees. Um, our budget is about a third of it's uh, the general fund. Two-thirds of it's revenue. Um, when we bury a veteran, we build a federal VA for the, the veteran's plot allowance. So, um, you know, a budget a little over a million, uh, half a million dollars a year, um, of which some of that is general fund, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, re it's revenue generated by the, mm -hmm. the burial of veterans. So now donations. I want to talk a little bit about the association, the New Hampshire Veterans Cemetery Association. We only have a few minutes okay. left. Can no, you believe I it? I, I talk know. So no, uh, I love it. <laughs> uh, I, please do. Yeah. That, that's why you're here. Uh, so if people want to make a donation, uh, the New Hampshire Veterans Cemetery Association is uh, in place for that. It, so it, they can do it right on your website. Right on our website, right at the top. Click donate. You mm -hmm. can do it online or. Um, you know, you can get a paver or a brick out on the walkway. That that all helps mm -hmm. generate some funds mm -hmm. for the association, and uh, um, that's why it's extra special because they help me with my state budget to do the, the things to keep it really, really looking top notch. Now, you mentioned your staff. You have approximately ten staff. There's about members ten of us. Stand, right? uh, two of them are part time uh, seasonal worker to help us with the load in the summertime, but. Uh, um, yeah, it's a small, small group that work together well, that we coordinate using two-way radios, so it may seem like we've got more, but uh, no, that's we, we jump back and forth to, you know, the one thing I caution people, we only do committal services, which is 20 minutes within mm -hmm. a half hour. Some mm -hmm. people try to do everything at the cemetery, and you can't, you can't do, do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, They're yeah. going to be disappointed, and we're going to be mm -hmm. disappointed. It can be part of the entire It can be part right. of it. It should be right at the end, but, you, mm -hmm. you know, you need to have something elsewhere, whether it's right. going off right. for a meal afterwards or, you know, church right. service or, Good to or know. such. Good but, to yeah. know. All right. Well, um, again, I'm going to give the information. It's uh, s nhsvc.com, and the phone number is seven nine six two zero two six. 
And uh, you uh, might be speaking to Michael Horn, the Could director be. of New Hampshire State Veterans Ceremony uh, Cemetery. I was thinking of veterans ceremony. Yeah. And uh, it's in Boscoin. Boscoin is it's 110 Daniel Webster Highway. And I think after December 16th, when you have all the wreath placing, oh, yeah. it must be beautiful. It I is. might want to take a little ride there right. and, yeah. and pay my respects to uh, the veterans. And, right. and if they come up Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock, there'll be a volunteer sounding taps every oh Sunday gosh. at 1 o'clock. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right, anything we forgot in the last uh, few minutes? I don't minutes, think so. If, no? if not, I'll be back to do You'll another You'll be back, segment. for sure. Okay. That's any time. All right, well, uh, with that, thank you very much for being oh, Thank you the, for having me, Doris. Conversations. This station belongs to you, too, so okay. any time. Uh, yes, this is Community Conversations. If you'd like to be involved with Concord Community TV or Concord TV, give us a call at 226-8872. You could be a producer of your own show. You could be, a, be on this program. Uh, community conversations, or you can have a bulletin board slide. So much we offer. YourConcordTV.org, and our phone number is 226-8872. I'm Doris Ballard. Have a wonderful day and a happy holiday. Thank you. You're watching Community Conversations, a Concord TV production.